I came from a very different background. Uh, I worked in IT. I was looking for something different, um, something that was challenging, something that was interesting, something that I had, I was, had a passion for. Uh, something that was creative, I think, is probably the biggest draw for me. We are constantly you know, uh, uh, looking to uh, develop and, and come up with new ideas for, your, for, for beers. Before I started up Siren, I went over to uh, San Diego for the CBC to uh, get, do a lot of research, make sure get in touch with lots of people to you know, give me as, as much help of a helping hand as, as they can. And one of the things that uh, everybody drummed into me said, it doesn't matter how good your home brewing experience goes, get someone on board who's been there, who's done it, who knows how to use professional kit. I have to say it's one of the best bit, bits of advice that, that, that I was given. Uh, and off the back of that, uh, I was introduced to Ryan. So I got started as a home brewer, which is pretty much how every professional brewer at this point has gotten their start, uh, and eventually just pestered people enough until I got an actual job in a brewery. So my first brewing job was in uh, North Carolina, which is where I'm from, at a small brewery called The Duck Rabbit. I knew somebody had met Darren at the, uh, at the Craft Brewers Conference, and just, they gave me his information and put me in touch with them and just went from there. When we started up, one of the one of the things that we wanted to do was to have an interesting line lineup of, the, uh, of what, what we call our core beers that were going to be around uh, uh, th throughout the whole year. Uh, and from that point of view, we wanted to find some uh, an interesting kind of arc, if you want. Starting off at something that's you know nice and easy, very accessible, and you know and and, and grow into something that's perhaps you know a, a little bit more different. What we wanted to try and do is wherever possible was look for finding ways of making a bit of a difference in each of the styles that, that we went with. So we went for an oatmeal pale ale, uh, the oats giving it uh, a, you know, a, a, a bit more of a silky body. But the sound wave is just a straight West Coast style IPA. It's a vehicle to get the hops to your mouth. So it's just supposed to be a very light, crisp beer, not much as far as malt goes to it, but then a lot of American style hops in it. Uh, as much hops as we could possibly fit in the beer is in that one. Whereas Liquid Mistress was a beer that uh, we had to have in the range for, from my side as one of it was a red IPA, it was kind of a bit, I guess my gateway beer into you know into this uh, new new world of, of hops and what have you. So you know uh, Liquid Mistress was born and that's a you know, beautiful uh, you know malt background, but you know balanced very nicely with tons and tons of hops as well. Yeah, the, the Broken Dreams is a breakfast stout. So ours has coffee, it has oatmeal, we use lactose, which is milk sugar, and we also use smoke malt, which comes across a little meaty to give it almost like the bacon aspect of the, the breakfast. It's like a full meal sitting there. It's also the highest of our core range, it's six and a half percent. Most of the stuff we try to keep below six, because I thought that was high, but apparently over four is high. <laughs> yeah.